Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are doing a video similar to last video, but completely different at the same time. So today, we are actually going to pick up a free quad. Now, in last video, you guys were loving it. You guys were loving the old style. Now, the quad that we found in last video was in the trash. It was at the curb. Somebody was throwing it out. But this one is not being thrown out, but it was just, it's been in a family friend's backyard for what seems years. I have a picture of it, and it is covered in, like, moss and stuff. It doesn't look too clean. <laughs> but today, we're going to be picking that up uh hopefully getting it running and then clean it up and probably flip it that's what i used to do like two years ago all the time all summer i made good money like that and that helped me afford you know bigger stuff like the nascar and the dirt bikes and help me step up the content on the channel for you guys and actually real quick before we start leaving i just uh put fresh fluids in the nascar this thing's all good to go the oil filter situation's all taken care of i didn't really bother recording it i did record me welding the uh nut onto the oil filter just in case something were to happen but i didn't bother recording it just because it wasn't that uh entertaining but i did put some uh better than last time oil in it so this thing is ready to rip and uh once i can get the trailer registered since the dmv is now shut down from the coronavirus we'll be able to get this thing loaded up and rip it but right now just gonna get some ratchet straps so i'll just take a couple of these and we'll be on our way way to go pick this up i do want to tell you guys that like we already planned ahead that when we go and pick it up you know we're not gonna have any other social contact with anybody else just us picking it up because the virus is a serious thing and you shouldn't be out and about with other people just want to clarify that, that we should all be taking this virus very seriously and that we planned ahead to make sure that there's no social interactions while we're picking it up Eventually. Alrighty guys, so we just got the quad, it's right back there. Uh, we even got the title, owner's manual for it, so super awesome. Definitely gonna need a lot more work than the uh, quad we got in last video, but it's a Baja, it's a little bit more well-known of a brand. I don't even know what brand the quad was from last video is, so if we need parts for this, it'll be easier to get. But let's head back now and uh, see what we got to do on this thing. So guys, we got the quad in the back, and as you guys can see, I already went ahead, took off the seat, and I removed the battery to see if it will charge up, but it wasn't. So I was actually able to get two batteries, one for the garbage quad and one for this quad. They're both the same exact battery. This is the old one off the one that we just got. Obviously pretty shot, but I got to fill it up right now. I'm not going to bother recording it because I kind of want to focus on doing it. just want to make sure not to spill because that stuff is not good to be anywhere else but a battery so i'll catch you guys back once i'm done filling up these batteries and then we'll see if we can get any type of juice out of the quad so we got the first battery filling up now we can see them all going down into each cell right now and that's the identical process for the next one so both batteries are now filled i put the other battery in the other quad got it idling over there right now just charging it up a little bit i got the other battery charging for this one right now but uh while it's charging up i do want to take a look at this thing i really haven't looked at it at all let's see if it has gas Okay, no gas. That's a good sign. So this thing is a 2007 uh, Baja 50. Obviously pretty gross looking. I mean, the plastics have faded pretty, pretty good. Uh, it used to be pretty nice red. Now it's basically pink. It's got the same remote features as the other quad. And you guys told me uh, from last video that that's for when a kid is driving it. If they lose control, someone can turn it off for them. And they'll be all good to go. This engine is so clean. Like, if you go back here, look at that thing. It looks brand new, like barely used. The tires feel promising. I just want to go ahead and explain something for some of you viewers. Um, the reason a lot of the quads and stuff that I have are small, like this. It's a kid's quad, ages 6 to 12. is because I flip them and then I can afford even bigger quads. Like, this isn't something that I'm going to be keeping forever or anything like that. Just a quick flip, give it some new life, and give it to a kid who would match it perfectly. That's what I did with the Baja 90. This is Baja 50. This is, I think, the actually lowest CC anything I've ever had, besides the Solex, maybe. But by no means is this thing fast, or will be fast, if it runs. Sometimes I say it's fast because it's fast for what it is. 
or if it's just running really good for sitting for super long. Just want to clarify that because I know some of you guys comment and sometimes think that I'm actually saying that this thing feels fast and that I should feel on a 450. And back when I had my Super Magna, the 750, that thing was fast. And I'm sure once I open up the NASCAR, because that's a 750 too for some of you new viewers that might not know that, that thing I'm sure is going to be really fast. So there's really nothing much I could do for right now uh, until the battery starts charging. But while we're waiting, I could check the oil real quick. That's always important. Oh, I hate when it does that. I mean, I can see it on there, but so usually you just got to stick your finger in there. And oh yeah, it's got oil. It smells clean too. Looks good. And then just one thing off the bat was the uh, the tires were locking up. Before when it was on the truck, I kind of loosened this up, the brake a little bit, and it seemed to roll a little bit better, but I believe it is the chain because that is actually really rusted. I'm not sure how well you guys can be able to see. Yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna loop that up as much as I can and maybe once it starts uh, driving, it might be able to loosen up a little bit and you know free up, but chain definitely does not look great so i'll catch you guys back in maybe an hour or so i just want to make sure that the battery charges up good enough because i'm sure this thing isn't going to be one crank and then uh you know fire up right away but once the battery's all good to go we'll pop it in and see if we could crank this thing for life so guys the battery is now in everything fit good so i'm going to turn the key and uh see if this thing will crank nothing and I am pulling in the brake. So since we have no power, I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the uh, positive terminal just to be safe. And I'm gonna check out the fuse. I see if it is blown. Fuse doesn't look to be blown at all. I know it's probably kind of hard to see because it is a really tiny fuse, but it is still connected. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reconnect the battery, turn on the key and uh, make sure that it maintains its voltage and see if it'll drop at all. See if it's pulling power from anywhere. All right, still at 12 volts. Let me turn the key, same exact voltage, so. We do have a good power source. Oh! I just moved the uh, ground. It could be a bad ground, but it cranks over now, which is good. So right now I'm just taking a uh, wire brush to the ground. It's kind of hard to put the camera in there because the lighting's a little weird, but if both of the quads from last video and this video just fire up just from a new battery and gas, I'm gonna flip out because that is the best look I've ever had in my life. Usually I gotta rip apart the carburetor, you know, go through the wiring harness. If I get lucky with this, I'm gonna be super pumped. No power, so it actually might be this end of the ground. So I'm gonna disconnect it off the battery once again and uh, re-splice it and see if that works. So we have a new uh, ground on there, which is good. It can never go wrong with new ground, but it didn't fix the problem. But the problem is, I believe is, so let's say I'm holding it down right now, which I am. I touch the fuse, it starts cranking over. So this fuse might actually need to be replaced. So luckily I, ha I have another one right there. We're gonna slap it in and that should fix our problem. These little tiny like Chinese fuses are always so bad. They're so thin. Sometimes you could even pop them off just by hand. So I'm gonna throw in a nice new uh, Honda one in there, and that should make a way better connection between the uh, two wires. Just popped in the new fuse, sealed it all up. Let's turn the key and there we go, much better. So now that we got this thing cranking, all good to go, uh, I'm gonna pop in some new gas and we'll just check for any leaks or anything like that. And we'll see if it'll fire up. We won't put in too much. Oh my God, I hate this gas can so much. All right, that should be good. All right, nothing. I don't want to kill this battery. It's brand new. So just to try and get it started, I'll spray some starter fluid into the intake. And I did just not uh, push it into the shade because the lighting was really bad before. Let's see if that helps at all. Now uh, that sounds like no spark. I'll spray in a little bit more and then if that doesn't work, we'll try pull the spark plug and see if there's any spark. Come on, come on. It wants to go. I'm trying to adjust the choke real quick. All right, there's spark, that's good. I'm gonna try and loosen up the uh, fuel drain. See if we have any fuel at all. Okay, nothing out the screw. Floats may be stuck, so I'm gonna keep that out. I've been trying to hit this like crazy for a good bit now, and I'm thinking that this carb is gonna need to come out, so not a huge deal. It's 
actually gonna run, so. It's gonna need a new pet cock, I think. This one's leaking like crazy, so I gotta keep clamping it down. But I cannot get fuel to the line that goes to the carburetor, because for whatever reason, they designed it as the petcock is below the carburetor, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's also gonna need new fuel lines too, because one of them just snapped in half. They're all rock solid. It looks to be that this petcock is actually not working. So I'm gonna try and spray it out, see if it's clogged. Both fuel lines are now broken, which honestly I'm okay with, because they are literally just like metal rods. All right guys, so right now I'm a little bit flustered because everything is kind of just breaking over here. So instead of just working around the plastics, I'm going to take off everything, pop off the gas tank, start fresh. Uh, I'm not going to bother recording it just because I don't want to bore you guys with a bunch of time lapses, but I am going to be needing to take off the handlebars. I was hoping that if I just took off that front cover, I'd be able to pull everything around the handlebars, but I'm not. But everything else I already took off. So I'm just going to go completely fresh, get everything out of the way so I can really get to what I need to work on. And then we'll start from there. All right, so now that we finally got everything exposed, uh, it looks super weird, but I just have a feeling that the carb doesn't actually need to be cleaned. I mean, it might, but I just have a feeling that it's just this pet cock that's causing all the issues. I had filled up the carbs before by hand, and if I go ahead and take out, or begin loosening the bleeder screw, we got fluid coming out of the drain. So the fuel inlet or the flow isn't stuck up like I thought it was before. It just wasn't getting fuel because of the petcock. So right now it's currently too late to go to the hardware store and get new fuel lines or any new parts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. And then tomorrow we're gonna get everything we need to get. So I'm gonna see if I can get like an inline petcock just to put in the new fuel lines, just to completely eliminate the old one. Just so I don't have to wait for shipping or anything like that for a new one. Cause I really don't know how the whole shipping thing is going on right now with the whole virus. I just find it super weird that the petcock is way down here and then the fuel inlet's way up here. So it's gotta be like a vacuum pull type thing because there's no fuel pump or anything. So that's definitely a little bit weird, but with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this whole mess cleaned up and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty guys, so we are back here and I just went to the hardware store, but it's closed. I really don't wanna go out to places really that much with the whole virus, so. I'm just gonna piece together what I could do from here. So this is the only uh, like fuel line that I can use and it's way too big for the gas tank and the inlet on the carb. So I'm just gonna put the old uh, piece, you know, part of the good piece, you know, this part is actually still rubbery, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna wedge it in there like this and then hose clamp it down. It's already pretty tight in there, so it shouldn't leak like this, but. And I am gonna be cutting this line shorter and I'm just gonna go straight to the gas tank to the carburetor, completely eliminate the, pick, the pet cock, and I just wanna see if it'll run. I really have a good feeling that it's not gonna need a carb clean. I just have a gut feeling, but I'm gonna put this end on the part that's on the gas tank that I have clamped down right now. Make do with what I can do right now, uh, just so I don't have to go out, because I do wanna play my part in helping stop this virus. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna plop on the gas tank, uh, see how much I'm gonna need to cut off, and uh, we'll see if this works. I one thing I'm just really hoping is since there's going to be no pet cock, if this carb leaks, then I'm not going to be able to stop it unless I put the vice grips on it. But if it does, then I'll try and make something together like we always do. You know what? Now that I look at it, I might be able to just run from here to there, literally that far apart from each other. The outlet on the gas tank is literally right on top of the inlet on the carb. So I'm just going to drain out this fuel real quick just to get this vice grip out of the way and then we'll see if I can make that work. The tank is all drained. Uh, the gas that came, out of, that came out of it was actually uh, pretty clean so that told us that the gas tank was uh, clean. That's one thing I love about plastic gas tanks. They're not like metal ones. You don't have to really worry about rust or you don't have to worry about rust at all. I right, got it on there pretty good. I think I'm just gonna throw a hose clamp on there and then I'll check for leaks. So I just got the line all secured and good to go. So I'm just gonna add in just a little bit of fuel, uh, see if the carb will fill up. And then if it does and there's no leaks or anything like that, I'm gonna go ahead, connect the battery how it is right now and try and start it I'm doing this because if I put it all back together, go to start it and the leaks, it's gonna be way easier to take apart the carb how it is now than with all the plastics on. So let's cross our fingers and see if this thing will fire up. Yep, yep, we got fuel coming out of the hose. So tighten that up. Let's hook up that battery and crank this thing up. 
he is on. Give it a quick blip. All right, we got power. All right, choke is on. Let's see if this thing will fire up. Here we go. And it idles. Just like that, it is idling perfectly. No smoke coming out right now. No leaks coming out of the uh, overflow or the float bowl or anywhere. So just to ensure that this is definitely good to go, I'm gonna let it idle for a good bit, you know, mess around with the carb, just to ensure that it is 100% good to go and I can go ahead and start reassembling this whole mess. There's no ticking in the engine, still no smoke from what I can see. I'm impressed. Let's see if it'll fire back up. Oh yeah. Doesn't feel like it's bogging down at all, so that should be good. I just, uh, oh, I guess that's the kill switch. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, begin putting everything back together. There are a thousand screws <laughs> holding these plastics on, and the handlebars are such a pain to put on. I don't know why they're designed the way it is, but whatever, I'm not complaining. This was a free quad. Could be way worse. So the quad is all back together finally, uh, and I believe it's ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna fire this thing up. Oh yeah, it doesn't even need the gas to fire up. So I'm gonna let this warm up for a good bit since it's been years since it's actually been ridden and ran. I'm gonna check the oil real quick and then uh, we'll take it on this little maiden voyage. Right, so now that it's been ran for a good bit, I still can't get over it. That's a really weird kill switch and really not handy if you're about to crash. Oh yeah, we're good. So guys, I think it's time to uh, take this thing around the yard and see how she feels. Uh, I'm gonna keep my eye on the chain just cause it is pretty rusted up. I'm gonna keep looping it up and keep driving around and it should loosen up. Cause currently it is pretty hard to push. I mean, for what it is, it should be way easier, but it's got a good bit of like drag in it. And it's not the brakes or anything, it's definitely the chain. So I'm just gonna loop that up real quick once again and then uh, take this thing out. Eh. Still feels a little bit smaller than the uh, other one, actually, the 90. Woo! Oh, she's ready to fog. Oh yeah, 100%. So definitely just gotta keep looping up that chain. It runs good though, I will say that. Here we go. Good brakes though. So guys, this thing is running really good, but it's very, very slow. So that's a little bit disappointing, but what am I gonna do? It is a 50, and I'm also way heavier from what this thing is probably rated for, yeah, ages six to 12. So I'm sure this would be perfect for a kid that is, you know, six to 12, and is beginning how to ride and just wants to put around and have some fun, but it's a healthy engine. There's no smoke coming out. It's not bogged down at all. I would say that I can adjust the uh, little throttle, but it's fully adjusted. It's pretty much all the way backed out. It makes you feel like you're doing like a buck 20 going into a turn, because it just, rips up the like the, the dirt and it just completely understeers like crazy if we come over here like it is just getting torn up over here it's definitely gotta 
fix that all up so the grass will grow but the transmission on it actually has kind of a uh like a cool hum when when you're up to speed it kind of sounds pretty cool almost like a sequential transmission like when you're hitting the gears and it starts like whining that's almost how it sounded on this but anyway guys i think i'm going to be ending off the video here i just really wanted to get this thing running and riding but anyway guys i'm going to be ending it off here uh thank you guys so much for all the support lately it still hasn't truly comprehended that we've hit 100,000 subscribers but comment down below some videos you guys would like to see it's been a little bit harder to make some content now with the whole quarantine thing but once this is over i definitely want to go hit up the track and uh go ripping and i also have a couple build ideas in my head so stay tuned for that but follow my social medias they'll be on the outro of this video instagram snapchat i use the most but thanks for watching please subscribe like comment tell your friends about the channel